Hey guys, today we're going to talk about my top 10 cards and Conspiracy Take the Crown. We're going to begin with number 11, and this is an honorary mention. I like this elf advisor quite a bit. Uh, he's very unique. I'm not sure what type of decks would be best for him, but it seems to me like a build around commander. And he has two relevant abilities, which combined in multiplayer is very beneficial. So maybe I'll make a deck about him. For number 10, we have Ingenious Iconoclast. It does a lot of things I love. It produces tokens which can block, it can sacrifice tokens, it can, and it has a really awesome ultimate and multiplayer where it's just fun. It seems like a fun card that comes down early enough in a multiplayer format or a draft format and does enough while protecting itself. Creating tokens is definitely very good for Planeswalkers. Next, we have Ghost Assassin. Very flavorful. I only have her as number nine. She might go up in price uh, from where she currently is, and she might go up in ranking as well. I like the fact that she has no loyalty. She has no way to uptick her loyalty except flashing in, flashing out. Very, very difficult to kill her. And the negative two and the negative one, they're both relevant. I think it's good enough because the more opponents, the better the card is. It scales well. For number eight, I have Inquisition of Kozilak, a very useful reprint. Uh, one of the reprints that I wanted to see in a standard set maybe, but I'm happy to see it in Conspiracy. Definitely a card that is worth its money and a card that if you open a pack of this and you're drafting, it's good enough in draft and the value. It provides an instant value. Also a great card in modern, so very happy to see that. Number seven. So this is a new one. I don't think this is exploration in the sense of legacy lands, but it's very, very good in multiplayer. Uh, whenever an opponent plays a land, you may play a land from your hand onto the battlefield. That obviously scales well when there's more than two players. It's interesting, the price point is also interesting right now, but exploration in a one versus one format, it is not, because you never want your opponent to have choices. Next, we have Visions. Now, this was probably, in my opinion, the reprint that needed to be reprinted even more. I know Damnation is on everyone's list, and definitely Damnation is something that I would hope that they consider heavily in a standard set or somewhere where the price would go down because it's a very casual card but visions very happy to see it. it's no longer going to be the pricey common it used to be talking about reprints birds of paradise you can never really have enough birds of paradise in my personal opinion it's nice to see a reprint because this card was above ten dollars now would it be better with the seventh edition art probably you know but you can't really complain about a reprint of a card that is one of the most iconic cards in Magic and it's one of the most reprinted cards in Magic. So I think it's a good home in Conspiracy where it's multiplayer. Berserk. Now, Berserk is an interesting one because it's not one that I could see coming. Uh, it's only ranked number four on my list. But value-wise, as you can see from Star City Games trying to get $60 from it, it is the most expensive card in the set. Uh, it's very, very good. It's amazing in multiplayer. You can, when the, your opponent attacks like another opponent, you can cast it on their creature, do a lot of damage, and kill the creature. And number three, so we get the top three. This one is very good in my opinion. I like it a lot. It's unique. Um, it might see play in Legacy um, in the terms of the death and taxes. When it comes in play, you choose a number and then non creature spells with converted mana costs of the chosen number can't be cast. It's very good against Storm. It's very good against uh, any of the blue decks that rely on Brainstorm. Good card. Next, uh, we have this card. And you might be like, oh, what is this card? Uh, it is Show and Tell. There's no image for it right now, but it's the same image. And Show and Tell. It, one of the most uh, valuable and fun reprints. It's 
close to damnation in my opinion but definitely a car that shouldn't be as expensive as it's as it is but with a $50 show and tell and a $70, $60 berserk it will go down in price number one this card I like a lot, Recruiter of the Guard. I like it for many reasons. I like it because it's non-mythic, and I like it because it's very similar to Imperial Recruiter, which is a $200 plus dollar card. And it's you could budget it, and it will be good. It's good enough to play in Death and Taxes in Legacy, and it's going to be overall an amazing card for draft. All you have to do is open one of these, draft it, and you already paid for your next conspiracy draft. Uh, and that's saying a lot for a rare card. Overall, it's a very um, strong card in my opinion. I think it's one going to be one of the most dominant cards in this concurrent set. And we'll see where its price ends up. If it was a Mythic, it, I think it would be a $60 Mythic on the lines of Berserk. But because it's a rare, it could really plummet in price. Rares, for the most part, do not hold thirty plus dollars. And uh, even pre-ordering, it's very st strange to see one of those at that high. Snapcaster wasn't that high during pre-orders. So anyway, um, that was my top ten list. Do you guys agree? Disagree? Do you guys have a different top ten list? Uh, let me know in the comment section below. <laughs> anyway, bye guys.